hey, hey, hey. Look at what we have. That wonderful music is back. Yes. Let's do the tango. Yeah. Hey, and our seahorse friend is back. Good to have you. Welcome aboard, my friends, to another review video. Review video two for chapter 11. And I'm excited to see our seahorse. See, I told you we'd bring you back. Not to worry. Uh, yeah, you guys can stay in the video. No problems. What, you invited your friends? Just as long as you guys stay out of the way, I have no problem, okay? So, just cheer up, my friend, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. Number seven. It says that Javier drew the shape shown. Okay, I do see the shape. For number 7A through 7B, choose the values and term that correctly describe the shape Javier drew. When we talk to values, usually we, in math we refer to numbers and the term, of course, being a name. So let's see, 7A says the figure has, oh, I just have to count how many sides. I have to be honest, when I look at that, that looks like a stop sign. Yes, I do drive, therefore I have to follow the rules of the road. That's right. And when I see one of those big red signs, I know I have a stop sign, and a stop sign has eight sides. And you can see the opposite sides there, so yes, I'm going to choose eight. If this work could get any easier, I think I would be teaching kindergarten. I don't know. I'm just saying... Hey, just saying. So anyway, it says that, uh, so the figure has eight sides and it has how many angles? Well, interestingly, it also has eight angles. It has eight angles and eight sides. And you could count those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and the angles you could count as well. I say we move on. Yes. Ooh, is that voice scary? Oh, nice. So let me look at the next 7B. The figure is a regular octagon, a regular heptagon, or a regular quadrilateral. <laughs> I'm sorry, that last one's kind of funny since quad means four. Now, that's how we could actually solve it because oct means eight. Hept means seven. So, octagon. So, there you go. I'm going to say it's a regular octagon because all the sides are congruent as opposed to an eight-sided polygon that does not have congruent sides, and then we call it, a, what, an irregular? Now they call it, a, what do they call it, a non-regular octagon. Time to move on. Oh, there you go. You aren't kidding your friends. Oh, my goodness, they're everywhere. Okay, okay, so far, they say, she said they would stay out of the way, and this guy's out of the way, just barely. Number eight says Victoria used one-inch cubes to build the rectangular prism shown. Find the volume of the rectangular prism Victoria built. But since we do know, and this is so important for the test, that length times width times height, that's right, equals volume. And volume takes up space. Yes, and this cube's taking up some space. These seahorses are taking up a lot of volume here, aren't they? Anyway, so we have that simply 6 times 3 times four. I'm going to look for some nice matches here. I don't really, oh, I do see one. Six times four is 24. And I always like the times three because that's just like saying 24, 48, 72. That is on the wonderful mathematical practice page that I have in my classroom called the scary page. And I have those kinds of problems on there. Okie dokie, let's move on. Woo, more seahorses. Nathan drew a scaling obtuse triangle. Okay. For 9A through 9Cs, choose yes or no to indicate whether the figure shown could be the triangle that Nathan drew. Well, let me look at this. And first thing I'm going to say is I know that a scalene triangle has no equal sides, no congruent sides, no congruent angles. But it says it's a scaling obtuse. An obtuse triangle is a triangle that has an angle that's obtuse. An obtuse angle is an angle that is larger than a 90 degree angle. Therefore, I'm looking at these and first thing I'm saying, well, this one here, I see two angles here down at 9C. I don't know why I skipped way down here, but they look like they're acute angles. And this is exactly 90. So can't be this one here. This is like a right triangle, I would say. So this one's no. And let's see what else do we have here. 
this here looks like it's got an acute angle here, an acute. If I were to do this, they didn't put the little right angle there, so I'm going to think that this angle here is obtuse because it's not, yeah, it does not look like a right angle there. It doesn't look like a perfect L, otherwise it would have had it. So I said, yes, that's a possibility. Could be. All the sides look different. Here, this is larger. Definitely here, this is larger than 90 degrees, and the other two are smaller. And yeah, it doesn't look like, I'd have to actually go out and measure it, I'm kind of doing it by the eye, but this looks like that it would be a scalene. Okay, let's go on to the next problem. Oh my goodness, did you just get bigger? Whew, the seahorse is inflating. You know, you're not supposed to drink the seawater. You're supposed to just swim in it. No, just kidding. Okay, number 10, it says a shipping crate holds 20 shoe boxes. The dimensions of a shoe box are six feet, I'm sorry, six feet, six inches by four inches by 12 inches. For numbers 10A through 10B, select select or for each statement hmm, do you think that's a little typo i think it probably mean true or false select true or false for each statement i think it's missing a few words there all right 10a says each shoe box has a volume of 22 cubic inches all right i don't know if i would go with that one there that doesn't that number sounds way off but let's see because we have basically six times four that's 24 times 12. 24 times 12 that's Using the distributive property is 24 times 10 times 24 times 2. I like that because that makes you that's 48 and that's 240. So 240 plus the 48 is 8, 8, 288 inches cubed. Since we're doing uh, volume here. Uh, yeah, that's not really even close. 22 cubic inches. Oh my goodness. Ah, I think you're a little bit off there. I'm going with false. It says each crate has a volume of about 440 cubic inches. You know, I really wouldn't even have to figure this one out, would I? I mean, look at this. This is one shoebox. Okay. And if one shoebox is 288 inches cubed, doubling that would only be like a couple shoeboxes. And they're saying there are 20 shoeboxes in one crate. Uh, this can't even be true. I hope you're following me on thinking. You could go ahead and calculate 20 times that amount, but the number's going to be just too large. Now, if the crate could hold 27 shoe boxes, the volume of the crate would be about 7,776 cubic inches. Okay, this is going to be a really large number, so we're going to have to figure this one out. So we'll just come over here to the, the seahorse over here and. So we'll take our 20 now. We'll take our 288 since that was the volume for one shoebox. We need 20 of those uh, in one crate, which is going to give me, looks like 17, carry the one, 5,760. And now it's saying seven more. And I could do seven, seven times. Could we estimate? Could we say 288 is really about 300? Just multiply that by 7. That would be 2100. And if we add that 2000 on to 5000, is that about 7000? Yes, that looks extremely close. So I'm going to go ahead and say true on blue. Do, 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 do. Okay, for number 10 C is going to be true. All right. Let's bring it on down. Bring it on down to Mario. Mario is making a diagram that shows the relationship between different kinds of quadrilaterals. In the diagram, each quadrilateral on a lower level can also be described by the quadrilateral or quadrilaterals above it on higher levels. Okay, that's like those different clubs that we talked about in class. It says complete the diagram by writing the name of one figure from the tiles in each box. Not every figure will be used. And of course, it can't be because we, only have, we have four of these and we only have two empty places. So we have quadrilateral at the top and the square at the bottom. And it said that, yes, that each one below can be described by the one above it. So square is a type of quadrilateral. So what's another figure that's also uh, that a square would, could be described as? 
Well, surely not a triangle. I think a triangle, I hate to say it, buddy, but I think you're out of this game. You're going to have to sit this one out. Um, trapezoid, parallelogram, one of these. Well, you know, I seem to recall the rhombus, its attributes are just simply that you have to have four congruent sides. That's it. And, of course, that means that you have parallel lines, too. So I'm going to say this here is a rhombus because a square is also a rhombus. So that's why he would be above the square. And then that would only leave parallelogram or trapezoid. Well, trapezoid, unfortunately, you only you have exactly one pair of uh, parallel lines. And here, one set of parallel lines. Here, parallelogram has two sets. So I'm going to say you're, you're out of this one. I'm sorry. And here, I'm going to put parallelogram. So we'll write that in there. Parallelogram. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I come down. Going down, down. And all these seahorses, I just can't get over you guys. Okay, yeah. And part B. This is Mario claims that a rhombus is sometimes a square. Hmm. But a square is always a rhombus. Is he correct? Explain your answer. Oh, we were just talking about that one right up above. I can say that almost definitively, I would say. Yes, this will be my final answer. I say absolutely yes. Okay, a square, see, has four sides that are congruent and they're equal. So does a rhombus. See, a square with these features is also a rhombus because that's the only requirement to be a rhombus is to have four congruent sides. However, try to switch it it doesn't work see a rhombus okay it does not have 90 degree angles therefore it is not a square her, her, yeah yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and write that up there you go with my notes there they are yes it is time to say adios buen viaje it's been real uh-huh it has my friends now as i always wish you Live long and prosper.